This STEM activity challenge is called Straw Bridge. And what I want to do in this video is I want to talk to you about uh, the summary of this activity challenge. I want to talk to you about the materials you'll need to buy to run this in your classroom. I want to talk about how you could set it up, some things you want to check on uh, when running this with your class. And then finally, what is the science behind this? What are we hoping that students get out of this uh, STEM activity challenge? So first off, the summary. Straw bridge is we're building a bridge out of straws. And what we're going to do is we're going to need to test that bridge. So we need to have a styrofoam cup uh, that gets built into their bridge that you as the teacher, or you could have your students, uh, start placing pennies in once it's finished to see how many pennies it can hold before the bridge fails. So the goal being how many pennies can your bridge hold? That's our, the idea behind it. Okay, materials. What you're going to need is obviously straws. Now, if you go to the dollar store, you can pick up uh, a lot of straws. Here I've got 180 of them in this uh, package right here that was $1. So this right here is, uh, is pretty much good for a classroom set. Uh, each group that's working on this, you're going to want to have somewhere between 10 and 15 straws that you allow them to use. So for, uh, for younger kids, maybe up to 15. Uh, if your kids are older, let's say older than third, fourth grade, then you're going to want to you know, use less straws. Um, these ones right here, they have the bendy parts in them. Uh, it really doesn't matter whether you've got that or not. Okay, so we're good there. You're also going to need masking tape. And here's the big thing, you've got to limit how much masking tape they use. If they use a ton of masking tape, uh, even if you fill up the cup completely with pennies, it's, you know, it's not going to fail. So that's the limiting uh, part right there is, is the masking tape. I will usually go, uh, even for the younger kids, uh, go one meter of uh, masking tape. Okay, so masking tape, um, you've got straws, and we've got a styrofoam cup, the materials that we need. Pretty, pretty cheap there. All right, now let's talk about running this in your class. We've got the bridge here, and I like to talk to students about bridges. Uh, are there any bridges in our area? What's the name of the bridge? What does it look like? Um, I also like to show the students some pictures of different truss bridges. And at the end of the teacher's instruction worksheet, uh, that's provided to you with this lab. We've got a sheet with, I don't know, 10, 15 uh, different truss bridges. And something you're going to notice, or the students will notice, is that there are lots of uh, different triangles in each of those different examples. And I like to have the kids look at them and choose one that they like, and then they're going to try to make their bridge look somewhat like that. Okay? So I, I talk to the kids and I say, we're going to test to see how many pennies it can hold. I say your group is going to need to build in a styrofoam cup into your bridge. If you don't build it in, we'll just set the cup on there. And if your cup tips over, well, you're done. You're done with very few pennies being held. So you've got to be careful uh, in how you secure this cup into your bridge. Uh, side note, some students in this group right here, they actually sent the straws right through the cup. And that's something that I allow as well. Um, I talk to the kids and I say, hey, you're being limited on the, no the amount of masking tape that you're using. And I also tell them you can't build a bridge deck with lots of uh, masking tape. So here's an example of a, of a kid that just started throwing a whole bunch of uh, masking tape on here. There are some groups, here's another one, where uh, we had larger masking tape and it's just completely covered. So this right here, uh, it's, it makes for a good platform, and uh, it actually does hold quite a bit, but a lot of the structural support here comes from the tape, and that's not the point of this activity. So stress with the students that their goal is to use as little masking tape as possible. Don't make a deck with everything really close. In fact, I usually limit the number of straws in the deck at the bottom here to five or six straws. Okay, if you, if you allow more than that, what's going to happen is you're going to fill up this cup completely with pennies and it's still not going to fail. Okay, I also tell the students that their bridge has to span eight inches. So I tell them as they're looking at the, the different uh, forms of truss bridges and choosing one, if they want to have time, if you have time to give them to map out and draw maybe what they want to try to build, give them a sheet of paper, give them a ruler, and they can, they can chart out you know, eight inches as the span that they need to go across. And then they can come up with a game plan on paper. So eight inches. 
Um, I let them work for a while. I give them a, three, a five and a three minute warning until it's time for them to test their bridge. And then we test. Uh, we test by uh, throwing pennies in. If it looks like a really strong bridge, I might even start by uh, putting in penny rolls of pennies. Okay, now this group right here or this uh, cup right here, I can see that it's pretty strong. So, you know, if I have uh, 100 pennies or 50 pennies all set up, I'll, I'll start adding them in rather quickly. Otherwise, it's going to take you the entire, you know, hour just to, to test, you know, a couple of these. If a student of a group does a great job with their bridge and you've got it basically filled with pennies, then what I, what I do is I would take some extra penny rolls and just start stacking them on to the side. Say, okay, here's 50, let's see what's gonna happen. Stack it on here, tuck it in here, sometimes even needing to tape a little bit of it on. So the goal is to see you know, how much can, can it really hold. And so something that you'll need here, and I don't think I mentioned it with the materials, is you're gonna need pennies. I would say at least three to 400 pennies, and I would keep maybe 100 or 200 of those pennies actually rolled up in the rolls. So if you go with you know 200 pennies that are all free and then you know four rolls of 50 pennies, you're gonna be pretty much all set to, to really load up this bridge until it breaks. All right, so that's obviously a lot of how you're gonna run this activity in your classroom. Um, the kids love this, they have a blast with it, but what are they learning? Something that they're learning is they're learning what makes for a strong structure, okay? And as they saw in the sheet that you're gonna provide them or you're gonna hold up, there are always triangles in bridges. As we go around, as we look at bridges, unless they're suspension spans, uh, you're gonna to see tons and tons of triangles because that's so strong. Can they build lots and lots of triangles into their bridge? Okay, if they do, they're, and if it's you know taped down there well, they're probably gonna do well. If they don't have any, uh, it's very likely that theirs is going to collapse or theirs is going to tip over. So ending with what can we do, did, did your group choose to use triangles? And then also, this is a, another common theme is gravity. Gravity is pulling anything of mass towards the center of it. So this right here, with pennies, even without pennies, is being pulled down towards the center of Earth, and we're trying to build a structure that can overcome that gravity. Can they do a good job of building a, a strong structure that will overcome that downward force? All right. Uh, like many of these other activities, I'm going to encourage you to, to grab pictures of the students running this activity. Uh, they love doing it, and it, it goes great for bulletin boards or things to send home to the parents. Have fun. Hi, I'm Josh, also known as Science Demo Guy. If you liked the video that you just saw, and if you'd like to see more STEM activity challenges like this, along with the student worksheets that go with each activity, the materials that you would need to run this in your classroom, the grading rubrics and the teacher instructions, all of these as editable PDFs, which means if you wanted to, you could customize it for your specific classroom, then check out my website, sciencedemoguy.com forward slash store. What you'll find is that I sell these as individual products and then I also sell them as packs at a discount. I have some very popular 16 packs and I've just created a 36 pack which I call STEM for the year. While you're there be sure to check out the reviews that other teachers have left. We have hundreds of reviews from teachers that have loved incorporating these STEM activity challenges in their classroom and maybe you will as well.